Today, John Smith of Gloucester can leave his family in the morning and travel safely and quickly over a modern express highway to his job. He now travels past property whose value has increased a hundred times over. When the interstate highway system was built in the 1950s, no one could have imagined the explosive growth that it would spur. Today, our aging network of freeways is unable to keep pace with the needs of our economy, and tax dollars are in short supply to rebuild the system. Everyone's aware that the gas tax is producing less and less revenue for the state relative to the need. We can't wait 20, 25, 30 years for a gas tax that is being depleted faster than we can maintain our system. If we are able to keep moving in the 21st century, it will require a new network of roads and a new way of paying for them. And Texas has an answer to this problem with new projects in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and the State Highway 130 project south of Austin to Seguin. We are very fortunate to come up with a plan uh, to address some of our congestion needs. We've done it through being willing to, uh, to leverage our projects to work with the private community. We have private sector partners who have unbelievable access to revenues. The face of our community is going to change dramatically with the reduction of congestion. I have to leave about an hour and a half early because traffic out there is terrible. It's horrible. It's, uh, it's slow. It's unpredictable. Motorists in Dallas-Fort Worth share the frustration being felt in all of Texas's metro areas, an out-of-date highway system in desperate need of repair and expansion. We think our survivability depends on additional transportation implementation, so we'll do it in any way we can to meet the, the customer's needs. No other metro area in the nation is having more success getting major projects off the ground. But we're about the only one that are doing actually adding new miles, and we've got to do that or we won't be able to grow. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, leaders are moving forward with three projects they've been planning for years. The North Tarrant Express, or NTE, the LBJ Express, and the DFW Connector. The key to their success, reach consensus, work together, use all of the tools in the toolbox, and leverage limited tax dollars with public-private partnerships. First of all, it takes a team. TxDOT and the Regional Transportation Council and the local elected officials working together on a common vision and private sector partners to do these very, very expensive projects. Had it not been for all those partners coming together, we would still be discussing probably the it for another you know eight to ten years. Instead of working against one another we really tried to make sure that we're working together. The North Central Texas Council of Governments, Regional Transportation Council, local and state elected officials, plus the Texas Department of Transportation all pitched in resources and then partnered with the private sector to get the rest of the money needed to rebuild and add capacity to some of the region's busiest corridors. The creative financing is the key. Uh, resources are, um, we all know they're limited. They recognized uh, early on that they're going to have to take control of their own destiny. Transportation experts like Dr. Michael Walton of the University of Texas and the Reason Foundation's Robert Poole see Dallas-Fort Worth as a model that other metro areas will follow on how to leverage private investment. They're very innovative projects that solve a tough problem of where do you squeeze in more capacity and how do you pay for it. Public money is expanded enormously. In North Texas, for a public investment of $1 billion, the region is getting $10 billion in highway improvements. The North Tarrant Express carries a $5 billion total project price tag, the $1.2 billion DFW connector, and the $4 billion LBJ Express will give drivers new choices. Drivers will pay tolls for the benefit and convenience of using the new managed lanes. Drivers on the traditional free lanes benefit too by seeing less congestion on the road. If America is all about choice, uh, I think managed lanes gives uh, travelers in that quarter all the choice they want. Virtually all these projects add new capacity that you can choose to use if you think it's worth what the toll is. 
and choose not to use. We knew that there were some areas where the congestion was so bad that tolls were actually preferred rather than sitting in, in, in congestion. And the tolls help pay to not only rebuild the aging roads, but also maintain them for the next 50 years. So what we get is a brand new state-of-the-art LBJ that is a free road as we know it t today. It will be that way after the rebuild. And we also have the addition of the managed lanes. The new LBJ also features an innovative depressed roadway design where the individual drivers can choose to stay in the elevated free lanes or enter the managed lanes below and pay a toll to ensure a faster, more predictable time. Texas's first dynamic tolling system guarantees a minimum speed of 50 miles an hour in the managed lanes on both the LBJ and NTE. Late at night, the toll would drop because there's not a lot of cars, traffic can move along relatively simple. In rush hour, the tolls raise, and the idea being is that you want to limit the number of vehicles that are on there so that you can maintain that 50 mile an hour minimum speed. And the DFW connector will make the trip much easier to one of the nation's busiest airports by doubling the existing capacity with new express managed lanes as well as new general purpose lanes. All of this made possible by partnering with the private sector. The DFW really is a model for the rest of the state to look at when uh, we're on the hunt for uh, real scarce and much needed transportation dollars. Uh, er other areas of the state are in the same predicament. Leveraging private investment is benefiting other areas of the state and rural communities, like Seguin as well. I think it's a wonderful solution. The final stretch of the new SH-130 toll road, built with an innovative public-private partnership, will soon reach Mayor Betty Ann Mathis' city. It's already had an economic impact, helping Seguin lure Caterpillar and 1,400 new jobs. Highway 130 coming into Seguin was a very big factor in their decision to come here. It creates a, a very big plus when we're meeting with industries such as a distribution center. The Federal Highway Administration estimates that for every $1 billion in highway investment, 30,000 local jobs are supported. The DFW area will also see a tremendous benefit to the prosperity and vitality of the region. There's all sort of spontaneous economic combustion just waiting to explode out there and it is going to. It'll probably start as individual pieces of the project get done. Uh, when it's entirely done, it's going to be terrific. Partnering with the private sector to make these projects happen. They lead to economic growth, uh, property taxes, they lead to jobs. Uh, that means uh, the security of, of families of North Texas. Another thing North Texas leaders have worked to ensure is that the public is protected. They required several things of their private partners. Okay, you want to do business in our region? We very much love your innovation and, and your uh, access to capital, uh, but government has a right to manage price and, and other items, and I think it's been a great public-private partnership. On the LBJ and NTE projects, all of the risk is transferred to the private sector, so there is no risk to future generations of taxpayers if the projects don't perform as expected. And they're quite motivated to finish the projects on time. Because they can't start charging tolls until they get it open to traffic and people can use it. So they're incentivized that way. Managed lanes, dynamic tolling, leveraging private investment are just a few of the innovative tools Dallas-Fort Worth and Texas are utilizing to upgrade its transportation network for expected growth. To move forward, they realize that they're going to have to have a menu of approaches, and they're creating those. There's often hard choices that have to be made, but frankly, it's our responsibility to develop bottom-up solutions to meet the people's business. Billions of dollars will be spent for city streets and expressways and for other highways of the primary system. The creation of the interstate system was an innovative idea back in the 50s. Fifty years from now, communities like Dallas-Fort Worth and those along State Highway 130 will look back at the projects that were built through public-private partnerships and know that they helped propel their economic growth.